All right, cool. So uh, this is really exciting for me to get the chance to talk to you, Chi-Chi. What a, what a thrill. Um, People are asking me about porn stars, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's to be expected. <laughs> How is it working with so-and-so? Mm -hmm. I'll a second. Okay. Awesome. Cool. So, uh, Chi-Chi, as we already talked about today, we, we got some stuff that we'd like to discuss uh, regarding, of course, the, the late, great Billy Harrington. But before we do, uh, I want to make sure whoever is watching this, I know a lot of my viewers, they know you for what you've done within... Watching right now? Not live, but... Uh, okay. <laughs> not live, but uh, definitely some people who will be watching this, uh, they know you from the Gachimuchi subculture that I've told you about. But they don't know a whole lot about you. Very intriguing. Yes. So there's definitely a, a lot there. And I think the first thing I'd like to do is just hear from you and for everyone at home. Do you do voiceovers, by the way? I do, yes. Yes. You've got a really great voice. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so uh, just a brief introduction from yourself. Uh, if you could please just tell us about who you are, what you do, the works. Uh, my name is uh, Shishi LaRue. That is my stage name. My real name is Larry. Um, I live in Minnesota. Um, I'm originally from Minnesota. I lived in Los Angeles for 32 years, but moved back to Minnesota as like an easier base for my travel because I travel a lot. Um, I've been an adult film director for 32 years. I've been doing drag for probably about, well, since I was 20, 20 so yeah. 30, <laughs> 30, 40 years. Um, and I've been DJing. I'm a DJ also. I play lots of trashy pop. Your Beyonce, <laughs> your Britney's, your Gaga's, your uh, anything, you know. I'm, I'm, I call myself a 15-year-old girl trapped in a 58-year-old man's body. <laughs> um and that's what i do awesome so what, what you're really saying is you have fun for a living yeah i do i i you know what it's i've been very blessed because i've been able to do everything i wanted to do i'm a huge adult film fan and i wanted to do that since i was 16 was be involved in the industry um, I was a huge fan of straight porn before I got into gay because there was really no gay where I was from, you know, no gay porn outlet. But I would drive miles, hundreds of miles when I was 18 and go to, actually started when I was like 17, um, going into adult theaters and seeing straight porn and falling in love and becoming a fan of these straight porn, people, which is kind of funny because it kind of goes back to the gotcha uh stuff because... Uh, you know, I was a fan of, if I could have made those videos back then with people like Sharon Kane and, uh, Vanessa Del Rio, I, I would have, cause it's <laughs> amazing. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, but I was a rabid fan of adults. And then I've always been a music fan, um, since I was really young, um, spent all my allowance and, and milk money <laughs> on records on 45s. And, uh, you know, albums and stuff. And Elton John was a huge, I'm a huge fan of Elton John and Cher and Kiss and um, those kind of people. And then as, as it goes on, as every year goes on, there's new people to be fans of. I'm not really big on a lot of the new music, but I love, I love, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of people like Boy George and Pete Burns and, uh, you know, Andy Bell and those kind of queer artists that that were a little weird and avant-garde that are and that were mm -hmm. uh rest in peace pete burns um you know and uh i've been lucky enough to meet a lot of my idols that i that i've you know i was in a madonna video i got to meet Cher. i got i've gotten to meet debbie harry from blonde i've gotten to meet a lot of really amazing people i've been really lucky in my life and uh the one thing i haven't done is gone to the asian countries yet and i need to do that Absolutely. Because um, I love the food, honey. I want to eat weird. I want them to put things down in front of me and just not tell me what it is. <laughs> and eat it. You Excellent. Know what I mean? so, yeah. So, you know, that's that's me. I, I'm uh, just a guy that lives in Minnesota and I'm working on casting a huge movie right now, a huge adult movie. And, and I'm going to uh, be DJing a gig 
uh, at the end of the month here in Minnesota, and I'm doing a drag show, and I mean, my life is split between all those things, and then every once in a while, I get to rest. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking a trip to London to uh, host an award show and to direct a movie there in London, and just, so yeah, so that's, I mean, God, have I gone, have I said enough? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody would ever mind if you said more. <laughs> So uh, I guess now that we have fully established who you are and what you do, uh, we can transition into the original reason you and I first got to talk to each other, um, and it is because of Billy Harrington. Um, you know, obviously the loss of Billy was pretty massive for a lot of different communities around the world, and the outpour over the internet has been very clear. I'm actually blown away by all that. I mean, I, I... – you know, Billy has been my friend for many years now, and, and we've been kind of like, we've had a tumultuous relationship. Um, it ha hasn't always been, you know, the best. Uh, we've kind of clashed, mm -hmm. a little kind of clash of the titans, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, each one of us thinking maybe at one point or another that we're more important than the other one, or that we're more in control, or, you know, uh, but we're both, pretty stubborn in that aspect. So when people that are both like that come together, it's, there's always a little bit of clash. But I, you know, God, the first time I met Billy, I can't even remember what it was because I filmed, I believe I filmed Billy Harrington's Body Shop first. And I just remember just, you know, obviously being extremely attracted to him because he was so huge and uh, an ominous presence. But, you know, he was a fucking New Yorker and he talked like right. this and he was fucking A and he had that New York Italian, you know, attitude and which was also attractive and also very off-putting at times. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, I, I don't know how graphic I can be. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the person that, you know, it's kind of like the guy that you'd like to fuck and then and then tell him to go away because he's because he's annoying. <laughs> but you know, I I uh, we did Billy Harrington's Body Shop, and it went really well. Uh, you know that he his partners in that he he worked with Spike, and. Uh, he worked with David Pierre, I believe, and who else did he work with? That? I can't remember. It's been so long. But anyway, um, we filmed it in a body shop, and uh, it, it, I just remember everyone just going crazy about him when he first came out because he was this massive, you know, cult type figure that, you know, back in the day when Colt was around, Colt, these guys that worked for Colt were very untouchable. You never really saw them at a lot of things. Right. So they were a little more fantasy orientated and more like, gosh, do these hulking like Thors actually exist? You know, these these gigantic subhuman, not subhuman, I don't know what's the word. Uh, uh, <laughs> what's a word for... Not a subhuman, but like a... Ah, I, I, a giant, a legend. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like like uh, the Hulk. Absolutely. You know, so... Um, yeah, so when we worked on that, when we came together, you know, we were very... Uh, you know, I, I was used to being in control of everything, and he was a little bit... You know, he, he maybe questioned me too much. And, mm -hmm. You know, and don't question me. I'm the director. Right, right. But it's like, you know, I'm not like that anymore. But um, I hope. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, he, we went on to, he, I remember after Billy Harrington's Body Shop and we were getting ready to do Conquered. And uh, he had done Tales from the Foxhole where he just did, a, I think he did a masturbation in that. I'm not sure if there, that's all he did in that. I think that's all he did. Nick, did you see that? Did you play a drill sergeant in that? Drill sergeant. That is a very popular source in Gachi Muchi. He, uh, <laughs> yeah. Just, 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 I mean, I, I know he... I haven't he, watched it in its entirety. I've only seen it in its out of context. <laughs> uh, all right. I know that, uh, yeah, okay. So, I just can't remember. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, I, 
thousands of porno movies, so it's kind of sure. like they all. I mean, I remember most of them. Right. But it's like, like to remember specifics on each and every. Uh, right. Which scene did did he do this in this one and not that one? Right. But I do remember Conquered in its entirety because it was so. Uh, it was so epic. It was prolific. I mean, it, it's award winning. The costumes and it sold like. You know, a lot of people are into the sword and sandal fantasy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that starred also Tom Cat, who was huge at the time, and Colton Ford, and uh, and Blake uh, Harper, and I think Spike was in that one too, and Nino Bocci was in that one. So there was a lot of really big names in, in that movie. The sets were amazing. Uh, you know, like I said, the costuming, the, the whole the whole thing was just really, really good. Mm -hmm. And I remember him saying that he didn't want to do any movies unless I directed them. Right. Even though we fought a lot, he never really wanted to work for anyone else. But he did work for John Rutherford, I believe, for Colt. I think he did some stuff for Colt. Like he did some photo layouts and he did some, uh, you know, like Colt videos or like where they do, it's just solos. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so Billy was... You know, Billy and I had a kindred spirit, even though there were a couple of, there's like some bumps in the road. Sure. But as Billy left the industry, you know, as, and I'm not really telling any tales out of school, you know, he had a, a trouble with addiction, as I do. And, um, you know, I've been through the sober, gotten sober, and I've relapsed. And uh, so I've got no judgment. On, on anybody's uh, sobriety journey. Sure. It's, it's, it's everybody's journey. And, uh, you know, he had some struggles in his life. He's been through a lot. He was he had been through a lot. And uh, I don't know if... I don't know if he... I think he was probably a true bisexual man. Um, I mean, when you look like that... This is my theory. Now, this is just me. Mm-hmm. You look like that, you take care of yourself like that, and you are adorned by so many people, and you look at yourself to keep yourself looking like that. You have to kind of look like you have to kind of like what you see in the mm -hmm. mirror, it's like the muscles and the bigness and the working out. The whole thing has to attract you. So when you're that masculine and you're attracted to masculinity like that, I can see where you know you would be attracted to other masculine. Sure, it gravitates. Yes. So, um. He, uh, you know, he started, and then he became friends with a lot of the people that I was hanging around with, uh, and kind of got intermixed into the sober community with uh, a man by the name of Chris Green, who is one of my best friends, who we've been friends for. I mean, I used to be in love with him, and you know, he was someone that I met through our musical likes of the Runaways and Joan Jett and and all that and um chris and i became you know best best friends we lived together at a point um and you know chris and i did a lot of stuff together and then chris became then chris got sober and uh he was kind of like a mentor for billy in the sober uh world billy would gravitate back towards the people that were good to him and uh gosh i just i just remembered i just just saw billy like God, it just popped back into my head that I just saw him like a month ago outside of pavilions in West Hollywood. He was walking his dog and we had talked about some stuff and he was, you know, wanted to start a website. We just, we just had, you know, we just hugged each other and saw each other and just like, you know, I hadn't seen him for a while. And he was, you know, he had just celebrated a year of sobriety and his family was out there to help him celebrate that his birthday mm -hmm. and uh yeah i mean it was like a week after i think his family had left that he had this tragic accident mm. yeah, so i remember i was at an a i was going to i was going to getting ready to go to an aa meeting and and chris called me and said billy was in a car accident and i was like oh my god is what's going on? He goes, ah, it was really a bad accident. They have him at the hospital now. And, uh, his mom is on her way here. She's on an airplane. Um, 
And then I got a text during the meeting that he passed. And I left the meeting and I went out in my car and called Chris and Chris was really upset, was really a mess. And he had to, he was going to pick up the mom at the airport and, you know, and the mom was on an airplane, didn't know that he had died and uh, awful. Yeah. So yeah. And then I, I uh, respected the wishes that Chris said, don't, please don't say anything on social media. Right now, let his mom find out first and let her be the first one to say something. And uh, so I waited until the morning and then I tweeted the, the tweet mm -hmm. about, and uh, you know, and I have received an outpouring. Of, it was really weird because a lot of the Asian, I don't know where it's mostly coming from. I don't know if it's coming from Japan or, or Korea or Taiwan. Or There's I, a lot of Japan and China right now. China, China, okay, yeah. yes, China. Where was he? Where was he? Aniki. Where was he? So, so Aniki is a Japanese uh, term. It's it really started in Japan in 2007 for him, and oh. over the years it has spread through the other Asian countries. Most recently, he's actually um, and, and the whole entire subculture has really been blowing up in China of late, yeah. and so that's that's where it's been moving. But he's you know he does that, all those places. All right, originated in Japan. Okay, so you know I I. Obviously, I can't read uh, the writing. <laughs> Sorry, no problem. I can't read the writing, and uh, but I, I mean, when I say thousands of responses, I, not, I'm not exaggerating. Yeah. Like my timeline was filled with people from over there just being like blown away and freaking out and crying and. And no, say it's not true. And then there were people that were like, this is not real. This is a hoax. And stop lying to us and trying to make us think that he's gone. And yeah. You know, and then, you know, obviously they found out that it was real because his mom had talked about it and it was on the news. And, right. you know, so, uh, I mean, I still, I get them every day. The, right. the and, and from people saying, you know, this can't be true. And, and his American fans, the mm -hmm. adults here you know um and in europe and stuff there you know it's it's it, it's a pretty big deal it's a pretty right. big loss it's not like when i lose anybody you know i, I really don't so you know i'm not i'm not saying that this loss is is bigger than anyone else's loss but you know billy had a far bigger outreach right stands in different aspects of life right so it's the response is proportionate going to be big. Yes. Yes. I mean, you know, we've lost a lot of amazing, amazing people in the adult industry. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's sad every time. Right. It's, it's just like another, Oh, but you know, um, so, and you know, then everybody always wants to know, well, how did he do it? Like someone said, Oh, we lost another one to drugs and alcohol. Well, no, that's not, no, it's not true. He's right. He's so, and he got in a car accident. Right. And, you know, and there's more to, to people in the entertainment industry than just drugs and alcohol. Right. There's other things that happen. It's life. It's real. You know, some people die of heart attacks. Some people die of car crashes. Some people die of old age. Some people die of drug overdoses. Some people die of gunshots. Mm -hmm. You know? And it's, it's all tragic. Absolutely. It's all tragic. So... Very sad, very uh, unexpected, mm -hmm. um, and yeah. I see. So, uh, for you, what would you say are, are some of your most precious memories with Billy, and, and things that you really look back on as like this was a, a tremendous experience to share together? Well, making the movies was great, but it was you know, like I said, there were some moments right. that were hard. Yes, that flashing of the Titan, probably real moments like being on the road with Billy mm -hmm. going and making personal appearances with Billy and in towns because we weren't we weren't uh I was the drag queen he was the porn star performer right um and there was no there was no competition right there no overlap in that subject <laughs> and uh you know those were always pretty great I remember we would 
you know, sit up at night and maybe on the airplane or, you know, when you could really get to know somebody when you were having a real exchange with them yes. and not yeah. like uh, telling them where to put their penis or, <laughs> right. or, or, you know, whatever. Or, this was like, you know, downtime where we would be going to a gig or we would be, you know, we would be in Las Vegas at a convention or, you know, we would maybe during a porn party, like after an award show, we would sit together and just talk and, and uh, you know, just talk real stuff. Probably the best times were when we weren't around the other people in the industry. And it was just kind of like a one-on-one. -on -one. Right. And we relied on each other for company in, in, in other cities. You know, just the real, the real part. Right. I knew a lot. You know, I knew a lot about him. Um, I knew about you know his bringing up in New York and and uh, you know him. He worked construction and you know just a lot of stuff about him mm -hmm. that you know I don't really feel comfortable about saying. Certainly, some, that's fine. <laughs> you probably know. I mean, if if anybody researches his life, he, they probably know about him and what's going on with. Things yeah. in his life in private, like they're not to do with the adult industry. Right. And, uh, you know, some of those things were very hard for him. Uh, you know, dealing with past things in his life. And I don't mean drug addiction. I don't mean, you know, na nasty things. I mean things that, you know, he that are in his life that maybe he has unresolved, that he had unresolved issues right. with. Just human and, issues. Yeah. And... You know, hopefully that will all work out for everyone involved. Right. And this might be a little bit of closure for some of those people. Mm -hmm. Right on. Yeah, and I've you know in my research about Billy is I'm doing on different projects and things in in his honor. I'm I'm you know seeing like he talks about you know how he looked at you as when he talked about like you know if I do this project, you know who's going to direct it? Definitely Shishi, no question. You know, so it, it was evident that you had that mutual uh, respect and endearment for each other. I think that he was comfortable around me. Mm -hmm. He was comfortable saying, like, we would, we could say, we could be comfortable with saying, like, he could say, well, fuck you. And I could say, you know, know what? Fuck you. Oh, I remember. Okay. <laughs> we, did, we did the final, we did the final link in San Francisco and we were sharing a room. And I remember that I ordered these amazing sandwiches that everybody loved for lunch. Well, okay. Everyone got food because I didn't eat one and and some and but Billy got really sick and yeah I had taken everyone and, and we had had lunch and then we all went out for the final dinner that night we all went to this restaurant and Billy was at the head of the table and there was all you know and it was like God, that box cover is so beautiful by the way too it was like you know so it was just a really really amazing shoot and we shot at this old warehouse in, in San Francisco and then we all went out to dinner at this really nice restaurant. Well, that night, it was kind of like uh, the bar fest mm. for, me, for everybody. Oh, no. <laughs> I got food poisoning from the sandwiches at lunch. Everyone but you. <laughs> I didn't eat the sandwich, so I didn't get sick. But I just remember being in the room and Billy, like, throwing up over his bed into the trash can and, and uh, God, there were... Yeah, like five guys that got really, really sick. I mean, whether or not, I mean, because they all didn't get sick. I didn't get sick because I didn't eat the sandwich, but maybe there was tainted something in some of the sandwiches. And I Russian out. roulette, really. Totally. So, yeah. And I just remember how watching this big, strong man hurling into a trash can, you know, like <laughs> being like really. <laughs> right, right. A little baby, like the little oh mommy help me! I'm throwing up. No matter how strong you get, you can't you can't stop the insides. <laughs> nope, you can't be strong through that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I got it. so funny. I'm remembering these things, and I'm I'm glad that you get to relive those as we talk because that's that's really for especially for people. It's just the best way to to keep them alive forever. Yeah, you know, is is to remember these things. So, I mean, we, we've definitely covered a lot about Billy. Um, I guess any closing remarks that you'd want to share about him, about his career, him as a person, uh, for people to get to know him from somebody who knew him so well? 
Well, you know what? I, I've kind of said, that, you know, I he was a great guy. He had rough edges. He showed those edges, and sometimes those edges were really sharp, and sometimes they were buffed down because mm. he could, you know, he could be a. He was a big Italian, <laughs> a, a, gruff, a gruff Italian from Long Island. Right. And you know, he was very, very Long Island, New York, mm -hmm. and. You know, but he was also very sweet, and he'd be the kind of guy that would, when we were taking the costumes off the truck, I remember we had like this, we had rented these costumes and this whole truck full of stuff, and like when we got, we got this big uh, chariot for the uh, the box cover, and you know, he wasn't, he would get up there in the truck and help everybody take down the, the stuff, right. and you know, carry stuff and do stuff. And he wasn't the diva that would just go sit in the chair and, you know, you know, what are you doing? I mean, like, you know, go and help carry the stuff and, right. and be a part of it. And, uh, you know, he was, he was actually a, a good guy. You know, we got in a lot of fights and I don't, I don't, I never, you know, there were times when I said, I'll never, ever, ever work with him again. But that was, that lasted for about, 25 minutes and then we change it. But, um, you know, and one thing I would really like people to know is that, you know, people in adults, in the adult industry, there it's so weird how people think that sex workers are just this bizarre alien person. Mm -hmm. You know, at, at most, I mean, listen, there's shoe salesmen that are freaks that are, you have to look yeah. out, careful for it, not get in their car or not go over to their house. But, um, you know, it's, it's, they're just people and they happen to do this for a job and for a living. And, you know, what I think is a big testament to his fans over in Asia, over in China and Japan and other places was that they didn't judge him for that stuff. Right. And they, they just em, em, uh, embraced him and made this person, this character so amazing. And yeah you know, uplifting for him, he adored them. That was, I think, probably the most important thing he's ever done. And probably his greatest greatest accomplishment in his mind was that he was able to do that, go over there, have all those fans, help make all those people. I mean, that one video when he's bringing the one fan up on the stage and he's like pointing at the person oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I'm up on stage, I'm like, I got like chills and I got like, you know, he... I didn't get to see a lot of that, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that what I see is that he was, if there was 5,000 fans, he would have liked to hug all 5,000 right. of them one time, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of, I, I, I feel that way when I go to places and I see all these people, I want to give as many people's attention as I can. And he's like, there's a lot of people that don't, that just want to grab the check and, right. and run. But it's, you know, and, I just really think that that was a great accomplishment for him. And I think he really, 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 really valued that and was blessed. And I think that probably that was one of the things that helped him through his sobriety and get through was knowing that he had all those fans that were relying on him for anarchy. Right. You know, big brother. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, it's, it's a big loss. Yes. Big, uh, shocking loss, and I just want to say to all the all the fans over there that hopefully if I ever get over there, I'd really like to go. It's on my bucket list, definitely on my bucket list, to get over to Japan and just to get over to China and Asia and just experience that part of the world that I've never experienced. Um, that you know he loved you guys, and you guys made him feel really, really amazing you did someone a service you you gave someone a gift that you know if he's listening he'll never forget it mm -hmm. and i know that he's he he just thanks you all so greatly for that for that gift yeah Wonderful. so i i mentioned i did also have some questions come in because not only was billy famous across this but you are too uh you are absolutely a piece of this this big subculture um so the first thing you mentioned a little bit in the beginning but what are your thoughts on this gachi muchi thing <laughs> well it's very it's very japanese and very uh, uh 
uh, what's what's called uh, uh, what are the the kids that run around the town? They call them uh, Harajuku. Uh, Harajuku. Oh, Harajuku. Harajuku. I mean, I just love all that ah, colorful. Ah, you know, it's just it's it's so fun. It's so amazing. <laughs> it's just so chaotic and so amazing. And you know, um, I it's mind blowing. Absolutely. It's, Absolutely. It's, it's kind of, sometimes it's kind of hard to watch because it's like, ah, that's a dollar, that's a dollar. Right, it's overstimulation. Yes, it's good analogy. Overstimulation. <laughs> it's kind of like at times I had to like turn away because it was kind of like, ah. Right. And I know that they've got those going on their billboards in in mm -hmm. Japan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Drive the car. Yeah. So, I mean, any any thoughts about that community now that you know that it exists and that people love it and do this thing? I mean, <laughs> well, me. that sounds really. But I would. I love them. I think they're amazing. Keep doing it with the porn people because awesome. it's so great. Awesome. Yeah. And you know, just look at any of my movies. There's campy stuff in most of them, so you can probably grab a lot of stuff out of them. I did a movie for Naked Sword called Scared Stiff, and it's <laughs> like a a takeoff on an 80s horror movie and uh there's lots of good stuff in that yeah okay yeah. we'll definitely take a look at that one I, I mentioned this one to you briefly as well but switchcraft is very popular internationally why because i look so horrible in it uh, well i you know the <laughs> for the community the two stars of that film are you and anthony stone um and it's so funny oh big anthony yeah he's, uh, the, he's the big get up you lazy cow where's my breakfast yeah right 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 and i'm yeah. like I'm in the bed going, <laughs> right. Yeah. No. And, uh, you know, we actually, um, it's unfortunate. We, we, we wanted to, to meet him too. We, we, we did track him down this year and unfortunately he passed away in 2011. Um, Anthony, Anthony stone. Yeah. In a car accident. Yeah. It was, it was very You're heartbreaking. No. Yeah. Is Anthony the one that was married to Cassandra? Yes. yeah wow yeah it was it was something you know I, I mentioned to you he he also you know people call him obama internationally and uh obama chavez a fusion of barack obama and hugo chavez and um you know he had he did also have a following that has grown but nobody ever knew who he was and just this year we finally found him but we never got the chance to tell him i didn't know that that's mm. wow he was on, also on the cover of Link, the final Link, with with Billy. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so it's it's something that we've uh, you know we found a handful of the stars and and as you mentioned you know it happens all the time, um, but we have found a handful have passed away over the years and very few ever get the chance to learn that this exists. I, I mentioned the only the only other person I know for sure is aware of it is Van Dark Holm. Okay. Yes, he was the he was the uh, he was in. He was in some Raging Stallion movie where it was like a, in a cave. Uh, wasn't he a fisting top or something? Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah, fisting <laughs> is 300 bucks is one of his most famous lines. Um, but yeah, he's he's been in numerous as well. And, and he got his start in the community because of Lords of the Locker Room, the Can-Am production. Uh, that is where people pull him from and started his popularity, um, as well as Mark Wolf and Danny Lee. They're oh, Mark. Yeah, Mark, I directed Mark Wolf in one thing. It was a solo in a bathtub <laughs> so yeah that's um you know those they like are... big boys they like yeah. the big well that, that's really what the uh the the idea is like the the big macho men is like really the 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 foundation of gachi muchi it, it itself is a a reference to a specific body type well they should check out this new guy that i just directed his name is da uh d'angelo jackson okay okay he, yeah all right or max connor who's this yeah, they're all they, yeah, they're big. big awesome, big, big. and that, that's awesome. there's lots of them. That that actually leads into this next question. People were asking, you know, um, would you be interested in seeing like a modern fusion of what you're doing now and this gachi muchi stuff? You know, you already mentioned that's it. Pretty freaking interesting. Yeah, I think it'd be awesome. I mean, I don't <laughs> I'm a muchi expert to take it, do it. It's like mm -hmm. it would be like, yeah, I don't know. I don't think the typical porn fan would enjoy it because it would be way too much going on. Right. But yeah, I mean, can you imagine like a short, like a 
you know, like a one scene or like, you know, like a short story, short movie with different characters and it's all Gacha Muchi edited. And, I mean, right. didn't she do a RuPaul, didn't RuPaul have a Gacha Muchi uh, edit of Jealous of My Boogie? Yes, for, right. Because I was in, in the actual, in the official video for that. Right, and you were the star of the Gachi Muchi edit, without question. On, I am? Yeah, on two instances. Um, well, you know, wrap it up, you know, from your promo. That is such an icon. That is like your most iconic line. What? Wrap it up. Yeah, that's, that's from a that's from a can't condom thing mm -hmm. I did. Yeah, so that particular line has been used in conjunction with a lot of other stuff. You know, I'll be jealous of my boogie. And I mean, there's, I could send them to you after. There are some additional ones of just, you know, taking whether it's you teaching a class how to how to do a certain a certain maneuver yeah. or you drop a one two yeah one two, or sack. Sack. that's the one they they put that to music so it's it's all happened and um that's you know so freaking funny. isn't it you know it changes the context you know what there's there's a there's a, a bisexual movie called revenge of the bi dolls where i play a crazy nurse and there's a, gotcha which you would probably love that movie because it's like they would they could take that and cut that that's a, yeah there's a lot going on in that one a lot awesome. of funny lines no and i think this is one of the best things about getting to talk to you is we get to hear from you you know you know what what little treasures are waiting to be turned into the next visual collage so yeah. that's something that we really get the unique opportunity by talking to you oh man so um i would love for that uh, uh someone to do a a, a gachi muchi edit of something and, and have it being like in a film festival here. oh that'd be tremendous and it's you know and it's so incredible because the community is so international um you know we have if you've seen the credits i mean if it's not the japanese projects it's you're running from every country that you could possibly imagine that has internet and video editing is working on these things and it's it's quite incredible all right so i have to go sure thing. i think Do you have more questions because i am I'm trying to do this production, and they're they're blowing my phone. No out. problem. I my finale for you. Please let us know where we can find you online and what to check out of yours. Okay, well on uh, Twitter, I'm DJ Shishi Larue, C H I C H I L A R U E, and on uh, Facebook, I'm Shishi Larue. I have a fan page, and then I have my regular page, and then on Instagram, I'm Shishi Larue. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll be sure to put it in the description of the video. <laughs> I follow you on Instagram, don't I? Um, you do on Twitter, and, and we are friends on Facebook. So, we'll we'll pop over to Instagram as well. Shishi Larue. There you go. All Shishi Larue. One word. Everything and more is what it says. Everything and more. Everything and um, more. Yeah, everything and more. And um, and. Yeah, so that's that's where you can find me, and um, I'm I'm all over the place. Just check my Facebook. I I, I announce everywhere that I'm going a lot. Mm -hmm. Awesome, well, Shishi, thank you so much for taking the time. I love to meet fans, and I will make it over there to China and to Japan. I will. Awesome. Want to make it over there? So, all right. Thank you, Shishi. You're awesome. And thank you so much. Keep on inspiring. Thank you. Talk to you later. You just listened to a conversation with Shishi LaRue. Get more from Shishi on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at the links in the description of this video. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like and share. And if you enjoyed the content here on the channel, I'd really appreciate a subscribe as well. This is Stanpai. Thanks for watching.